I'm Jackson. And I'm Dylan. And, and this, this is, is Wacky, Wacky News. <laughs> Welcome to Wacky News. My name is Dylan. This is a podcast for kids, about kids, and presented to you by kids. My brother Jackson and I will share neat stories every week for you to discuss with your friends on the school bus, during lunch, or whenever you want. Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another episode of Wacky News. I'm Jackson, and this is episode 5. If this is your first time listening, thanks for checking us out. Every week I operate the Wacky News Machine, which is this awesome machine that prints you out cool stories from all around the world. Then Dylan reads you the stories. You guys listen to the stories and then share them with your friends. Before you know it, your friends and family will think of you as their source for neat and interesting stories. So be sure to go to podcastplayground.com and click on Wacky News so you can go to subscribe and get every episode we put on. That's right. Subscribing is when you sign up for something so that you don't have to keep looking for it. If you subscribe to Wacky News, each episode will automatically download, and all you have to do is listen. You can also go to the website to learn more about me and Dylan, as well as the stories we report on. We share pictures and videos from every story, plus a list of definitions of any hard words from the story. So if you hear a word you don't know, you can look it up in the Wacky Words list for that episode. Another cool thing we have on the website is the Wacky Request Line. If you want the Wacky News Machine to find a story about a particular subject, person, or topic, go to the website and let us know. Today we have a request from Alisiana in Annapolis, Maryland. Hi Jackson, hi Dylan. Can you ask the Wacky News Machine if there's any news about what to do when it rains? What do you say, Wacky News Machine? Have you got anything on that topic? Oh, wow, this is going to be a good one. Rain, rain, come and play. Most people don't look forward to when it rains. But 23-year-old Peregrine Church has come up with a reason to love rainy days. Rain often makes people sad or gloomy. And the Seattle-based artist wanted to find a way to cheer people up and make them happy, especially since Seattle is known for being a really rainy city. After watching a video about super hydrophobic coatings, which are sprays that can make any item or piece of clothing waterproof, Peregrine had the idea to use the concept to make art. Wow, check out this video of people pouring red wine all over themselves. It's falling right off the shirt and pants. I totally need this. I can drop drinks and food like Pepsi, ketchup, and uh, popcorn, and it won't mess up my clothes. We are definitely putting this on our website for sure. Peregrine started using stencils to create messages with the spray on sidewalks all throughout Seattle. The spray is completely safe for the environment, and when it rains, water will beat off the parts of the sidewalk that were sprayed, leaving those areas nice and dry and light colored. But the rest of the sidewalk will be wet and darker colored, and Peregrine's rule is to only make inspirational and happy art. He doesn't want to make advertisements or boring messages. There are a whole bunch of pictures of things he's done, like this hopscotch board that we will share on the website, as well as a map of places to find his rain-activated art. And city officials approve of the art, even though he didn't ask for permission to do it. Yay! That's right. Since the art is temporary and isn't being used for commercial purposes, like telling people to go shop at a particular store or buy something, it's completely illegal. In fact, it can be considered as a way to encourage people to enjoy where they are living more. If you are listening and want to learn about how to get the spray so you can make your own rainy day artwork, go to podcastplayground.com and click on Wacky News. Under episode 5, we will include a link to Peregrine's website where the spray is for sale. I definitely want to get that. We hope this answered your question, Luciana. Okay, Wacky News Machine, what other news do you have for us today? Ticked off pets. This is an important story for anyone who owns pets that go outside. 
Like us, our cat Logan is an indoor-outdoor cat. As you know, when it gets warmer out, pets are at risk for ticks. Our mom always has us check Logan when she comes in from rolling around in the grass and climbing trees. And she also checks us after we've been rolling around in the grass and climbing trees. <laughs> That's right. But there is a reason that you want to pay close attention to your pets if they've been bitten by a tick. An Oregon family recently interviewed by CNN almost thought that their dog Ollie was going to have to be put down. Ollie's 10 years old and all of a sudden got really sick after the camping trip the family went on. He couldn't go to the bathroom on his own. He wasn't eating or drinking and he was almost completely paralyzed, which means he couldn't make his legs move. The family took Ollie to the vet, but none of the tests could figure out what was wrong with him. Everyone was very sad and didn't want him to need to suffer, so they made the decision to let the vet put him to sleep. But then, something miraculous happened. A veterinary school student who was working there started to get Ollie ready for the procedure when she felt a lump behind his ear and discovered a tick. It turns out Ollie had a rare condition called tick paralysis. Even though the dog had been wearing a tick collar, a tick had been him and released toxic saliva, which is spit, into the dog's blood. PetMD.com warns that ticks carry all sorts of dangerous diseases and that tick paralysis is caused by female ticks and all it takes is one bite. Signs of the infection will begin to show after six to nine days and it mostly seems to affect dogs, not cats. The symptoms get worse and worse and can result in death. Things to look out for are throwing up, being unable to walk or move, lots of drooling, trouble breathing, and difficulty eating. After moving the tick, all use back to his normal self in 10 hours. But in order to avoid going through this with your pet, veterinarians suggest regularly giving your pets tick treatments that absorb into the skin or can be eaten. To check your animals for ticks, brush your fingers through their fur looking for small bumps. Try making back and forth massage-like movements and be sure to check behind the ears and all around the head, around the tail and between the toes. Ticks come in all different shapes and sizes, so if you feel a bump, pull apart the fur to see what it is. If a tick has already started eating your pet's blood, it will be bigger and more white or gray in color. If not, it will be smaller, flatter, and a brown or black color. If you find a tick on your dog, make sure to have an adult remove it right away so that the animal will not get infected. Thanks for that important story, Wacky News Machine. We have time for one more story before our wacky jokes. Anything good? Brace yourself for awesomeness! If you have crooked teeth, your parents could spend a lot of money trying to fix them with braces, retainers, or aligners. Well, one college student in New Jersey decided he didn't want to pay thousands of dollars fixing his own teeth when he could just do it himself for $60. 23-year-old Amos Studley realized he was smiling less and less for pictures because he didn't like the way his teeth looked. He began researching brand name aligners and looking at pictures of them online when he noticed in some of the close-ups that they looked like they had been created by a 3D printer. 3D printers work by printing objects one layer at a time. You can tell if something was made by 3D printers because instead of it being very smooth, the object will have lots of straight lines or edges going across it. And it was when he noticed those lines that Amos, who was studying digital design at the New Jersey Institute of Technology, realized that he could probably use the school's 3D printers to make his own aligners. Amos didn't know much about dentistry or orthodontics, so he began by doing a lot of research. The first step was to make a mold of his teeth using special powder called alginate that mixes with water to become a thick substance. That substance then takes on the shape of anything pressed into it. 
After Amos had the mold of his teeth, he poured some permastone into it so he could have a model of what his teeth looked like. He could see which teeth were out of line and needed to be corrected. Then, he scanned the model into his computer using a laser. Once he could look at his teeth on the computer, he was able to use software to show what his teeth would look like if they were perfect. The software also allowed him to see the direction in which each tooth needed to move in order to get that finished state without messing all of the other teeth up. Each tooth is only recommended to move a certain amount with each aligner, which is kind of like a mouth guard you would wear to play sport, so Amos needed to figure out how many aligners to make. With each aligner having a slightly different position of his teeth than the one before, Amos determined it would take 12 aligners being worn over the course of 16 weeks to get his teeth to be nice and straight. Since the aligners were going to be in Amos's mouth day and night, except for when he ate, it was important to use a special type of dentist plastic that would not release harmful chemicals into his mouth or grow bacteria or hurt his teeth. Amos was able to find it on eBay, so he used regular 3D printer plastic to print the models for each aligner. Then he molded the densest plastic into a shape of the aligners with a vacuum form machine at the university. All of the pictures of how he did it are on podcastplayground.com, as well as the link to Amos's blog. So here's the question, did it work? Yes, it did. Before and after pictures showed a great improvement to his teeth, and Amos is smiling all the time these days. But it is worth noting that there are many reasons why you shouldn't rush out and print your own aligners. It takes a long time, near 10 years of training, to become an orthodontist. And when it comes to the health of your teeth and possible side effects to attempts to straighten them, you should leave that to the professionals. This is true. If there is a reason why your teeth are crooked, like grinding them in your sleep, you will want to take the right steps to prevent the teeth grinding from making them worse. And if you are trying to fix your teeth on your own, you might actually make things worse and damage your gums or even lose your teeth. Hopefully Anis' cool experiment will help pave the way for more affordable options for orthodontists to offer their patients. And now it's time for my favorite part of the show. Wacky jokes! What stays on the ground but never gets dirty? A shadow. (laughs) What three letters will frighten a burglar? I see you. (laughs) What did one eyeball say to the other eyeball? Between you and me, something smells. <laughs> what is the most musical pair of them all? The trumpet! <laughs> Whose job is it to sweep and clean the ocean floor? A mermaid. <laughs> what did the tie say to the hat? You go on ahead. I'll hang around. (laughs) That's it for episode five, guys. Thanks for listening. As always, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and join us next week for episode six. It's very exciting. And click on Wacky News for more information about me, Dylan, and Jackson, as well as pictures and videos, Wacky Birds, and more. And we will be checking the Wacky Request line to see what news you want to hear about. See you next week.